So let's look at this problem, which was IUQM come in more this year. So the first problem, geometry, a very good one. The first challenge is, let us read the problem first once. Let D be the interior point on the side BC of an acute angle triangle ABC. The circumcircle of triangle ADB intersect AC again at E and the circumcircle of triangle ADC intersect AB again at F. Now, the first challenge after reading all this is to draw a legitimate diagram. So, my suggestion would always be, don't go by the flow of the question. First, think how it should look like so that at least you don't waste time on diagram and you get something proper. So, all I need is two circles and a triangle to pass through this. So, let me take it a bit closer. Yeah, this way. And I need a triangle which basically intersects these two at two distinct points. This would be A, somewhere here B, somewhere here C, and this other point of intersection should be D. So at least my diagram would not create much of a fuss. So I draw a random triangle, oh, oh, somewhat like this. I have this two layer, so I can easily draw. What you were supposed to do is draw two circles and then think of a triangle and draw accordingly so that you start with the problem in a decent way. So this is how it should ideally look like. Let me name them. This point is A, B, C. And let us assume that we took a point D on the segment this. Now the triangle, circumcircle of triangle ABD, let me call this as circle C1 meets AC again as per the question at E, whereas the circumcircle of triangle ADC meets AD again at F. So these are the points which are in the question. I have drawn this thing. Further they say, let AD, BE and CF intersect the circumcircle of triangle ABC. Now as I look at you drawing this, what you are supposed to do is to draw the circumcircle of triangle ABC. So I definitely have a tool, what you were supposed to do, take a rough guesstimate of the two perpendicular bisectors and draw. It would come what somewhat like this, the circumcircle of triangle ABC. So definitely the kind of time that I am saving here with the tools here, you will get extra time to do that and you have ample time in Inmo in these type of problems. So what you were supposed to do is first think of how it is happening. So this let be the circumcircle of triangle ABC. When I produce AD, it meets this point at D1. When I produce BE, it meets this circumcircle at some point E1. And when I produce CF, it meets the circumcircle of triangle at F1, if we have understood the problem correctly. A, D, B, E and C, F, A, D, B, E and C, F, of course, this was E1, this was D1 and this was F1. The challenge in such a problem is that now the diagram becomes extremely complicated to work on because they are talking about let I and I1 be the in centers of triangle D, E, F and triangle D1, E1, F1. So for fair practice, let me take triangle D1, E1, F1 as the first one because it turns out to be the bigger one. And once we are done with that, then we will look into the in center of triangle D, E, F if needed be how to work on that. Because it's not a question of finding anything. It's a question of proving a result. And proving means at least you know what has to be proved. Still, let me draw triangle D, E, F also so that we don't lose out a sight on that. So somewhere here, it turns out to be triangle D, E, F. After doing this much, what we generally do is, we don't jump to draw the in circle and complicate it. Now let's start chasing the angle. And I believe that this problem is basically only the chasing the angle problem, but we'll see to it at a later period how it works out. We have to prove that E, F, I, I1 are cyclic. So if I can show that wherever I and I1 exist, E, F subtends the same angle on I and I1. I and I1 are respectively the in centers of triangle D, E, F and D and F1, D1, E1, F1. 
So we are done. So I start with chasing the angle. I realize that I call this angle if this angle is alpha. So have a look at the circle for your uh, like focus. Let me draw or shade few of these circles in different colors so that when we talk about a circle C1, C2 and the circum circle, I may call it as C. We don't lose sight of it. So I'll put it in a lighter color, but I'll shade these three. Because these questions were also meant for students of class 9, 10th and for them it would have been probably too much. So let us start. I take this particular angle alpha in this circum circle of triangle ABC. And if I look at the chord BD1, if this chord subtends an angle alpha at A, for sure this very chord again subtends angle alpha at this point E1. So if I call this point as E, I realize that even this angle is alpha. Why? Because segment BD1 subtends same angle on the circum circle C, that is the circum circle of triangle ABC. Let me see where else I can see alpha. Now once I see that this angle is alpha at this point, just have a look. Do you see somewhere else alpha again coming in the picture? So if I look at this chord BD, you have to focus on all the different circles. So have a focus on this green circle that is C1. The chord BD subtends angle alpha at A. So wherever the chord BD subtends any other angle, that also has to be alpha. And I realize that this particular angle at E is the angle subtended by chord BD on the same circle. So this is alpha. This helps me realize that DE side is parallel to D1, E1 side simply because BE when extended was BE1 and this transverse has these two angles equal alpha alpha. A similar kind of thing would happen on the other side also for sure. But before moving to that, let me see if there is anywhere else a scope of angle alpha so that we go. So just have a look. DC segment is subtending some angle here. Is there anywhere else where we can find angle alpha being subtended? So try to focus. We see that BD subtends an angle alpha at point A. BD subtends an angle at point E. Is BD subtending anywhere else angle alpha? Or is there something else which is subtending angle alpha? So I realize BD1 is subtending angle alpha and suddenly I see that D1C is also subtending some angle here alpha, uh, maybe some angle which is not alpha. So let us introduce the second angle. Maybe if I call this angle as beta. So I know that alpha plus beta is A but I may use it at a later stage. D1C if subtends angle beta here, I realize that this angle is beta because this is again on the circum circle of triangle ABC. By the same hypothesis that we did on the circle C2, I realize that if this angle is beta, somewhere else again angle beta is happening. Just have a look, good look on this and you will come to know where again this beta is working for you. If this angle is beta, then DC subtends angle beta. And if DC subtends angle beta at A, the same DC subtends beta angle F. So this gives me the other part that basically these two angles are beta. So that means segment DF is parallel to D1F1. We don't have as of now any clue that EF is parallel to E1F1 and apparently the diagram also doesn't suggest so. So we'll not go for that. Let me also further look if there is anywhere whereby we can find more such angles alpha and beta. We are chasing the angle, so we have chased to a good level. Just focus if we can find what is this particular angle and where is this mentioned. Have a look in the diagram itself. This angle probably would have come from this segment E1C. E1C would have subtended the same angle as it was subtending here. And if I look at this particular angle, so this I realize that this is the angle subtended by 
have a look at this. Is there any other segment which is subtending the same angle somewhere else? So I realized that yes, there could be a reason why I'm talking about it. Have a look at it. Is there anything else which we have thought of? I'll repeat. E1C subtends angle at point B in the circumcircle. The same E1C on the circumcircle is subtending this angle. Is there a connect between these two angles with one of these angles alpha and beta? If it is, then we are done. And I am able to see that where it is. It's all about you people to see. Have a look at this segment DE. In the green circle C1, segment, we are not in a hurry to do this thing. Although it's a video, you can pause as many number of times. In this segment DE, DE subtends angle beta at A. So DE would definitely subtend angle beta at B. The same angle beta is the angle subtended by E1C at B. So that means this angle is beta. And this is sufficient to conclude that F1C is angle bisector. Now angle bisector, if I realize that F1C is angle bisector, similarly by the same approach, even this angle would be alpha. So I can conclude E1B is also the angle bisector. And that means the point at which these two intersect was your first in center I1. That is of the larger circle, a larger triangle D1, E1, F1. Now remember what was our objective? To prove that E, F, I, I1 was concyclic. So I would love to have this angle in terms of alpha and beta and then subsequently prove that EF subtends the same angle at I. So we are done. So if I look at this angle, I realize that angle F1, I1, E1, I'm just marking it for you, is basically 180 minus alpha plus beta. I cannot comment about anything else because these two angles need not be same. Remember, these two are the angle bisectors, but we know and we are aware that EF is not parallel to E1, F1. It may be, may not be. So we have not taken any such case. We have taken without loss of any generality, the general case. Now coming to the in center for that, I would recall and draw a small in circle of uh, triangle DEF so that we can think something around in center I. So somewhere here, we will have the center I focus on this point. Somewhere here you would have the in center I. What you know is that this angle and this angle are not known to us because we don't know anything about them except that since these two lines are parallel, so whatever angle was subtended by E1 F1 at D is the same angle subtended by EF at D. Whatever angle E1 F1 was subtending at D1 is the same angle that EF is subtending at D. But that doesn't mean that these two angles are equal because on this side they are par the angle bisector. So this is beta, this is beta, this is alpha, this is alpha. But these two points are not taken as in parallel. They are taken randomly. But the fact remains is that the sum of these two angles are definitely going to be equal. Now to prove this, I'll require some space. So I'll remove the initial part. I have already got the essence what has to be proved so that I can, I don't want to complicate in the same diagram. So my objective is now to somehow prove that angle F I E is also the same angle. So I try to recreate a small triangle here, which is basically the image or the copy of triangle. D E F. So let us take somewhat like this. Oops. Yeah. So if this was triangle D E F, 
I know what this angle is. So that means I know the sum of these two angles. And I realize that there is basically a circle which touches all these three sides and EF subtends certain angle at the in center. What is this angle if I can come out with this the result is done. Now what I know is if this two angles are I'll take it for class 9th and 10th graders also elementarily theta 1 and theta 2. So this angle is definitely 180 minus theta 1 plus theta 2. But I very well know twice of theta 1 plus twice of theta 2 is basically sum of these two angles which is basically sum of these two angles which is twice of alpha plus twice of beta. Why is it so? Because this angle and this angle are equal. So the remaining two angles would have the same sum. There might be angles different but their sum is the same. So that means theta 1 plus theta 2 is alpha plus beta. So that means the angle subtended by Fe on I is 180 minus alpha plus beta which is same as subtended by Fe at sorry correction it was not F1 E1 it was F I1 E because ultimately F and E also lie on the same point I1 so if I call it as F I1 E it hardly matters F1 I1 E1 was also same angle but if I look it from the point of question E F subtends pi by 2 minus alpha plus beta at I1 and E F subtends pi by 2 minus alpha plus beta at I which is sufficient to conclude that E, F, I, I1 are cyclic. A very nice question to be done by chasing of angle. Thank you.